Hi, it's Wildman Russ here with the 2020 highlights from my Wild Angle series. Well, what a dodgy year it's been, hasn't it? None of us could have ever, uh, ever imagined um, what this year has turned out to be like. Um, I hope that I've inspired you throughout the year with my Wild Angles. Um, we started it at the end of February. We had no idea what was going to happen during lockdown. But during lockdown, actually, the show really, really started to come into its own. And we started to create these little snippets for Chris and Megan's Self-Isolating Bird Club. Um, and that went really, really, really well. Um, so what I've done, I've, taken, I've made a highlight show and I've taken all of those little short snippets and put them together, edited them up a bit uh, to give you a really nice flow from start to finish. And I've concentrated on all the local wildlife that we did um, here and on the barns that we were staying. So it gives you a really nice local feel. It's really positive, it's really inspiring, and it's only about 20 minutes long. So have a look now and hopefully this will make you smile and inspire you to go out and love your local wildlife. Morning everybody, how are you doing? Welcome to my little corner of paradise on the Welsh English borders. Now, three weeks before lockdown, our house flooded. I know, so we can't live there anymore. So we've been spending our isolation here in complete safety. It's a brilliant place to be, but I've been using my time to photograph wildlife within five minutes walk of where I am. There's no one else here, so it's perfectly safe. And I have found the most amazingly cool stuff. So come with me now and have a look. It's just been incredible. Well, here I am in my car and it's not quite a Jaguar. In fact, that's the words from the song. I like driving in my car. Doo -doo, doo -doo. It's not quite a Jaguar. I know, Rouse Dad Dancing and an 80s Madness classic. What more could you want in the morning? Oh my God. Now look, I am sitting in my car because it's a fantastic hide. My car's not driving anywhere. I've walked out of my front door into the passenger side of, <laughs> and got into this side so I can photograph because cars are fantastic hides. And if you've got a really good front garden, maybe with a couple of trees in it where the birds are landing, then it's a great place to photograph them from. I'm here for a very specific bird that's always been a dream of mine and has always been elusive. The tiny wren, this amazing small songbird with that piercing call is actually the shortest bird in the UK. It's not the smallest, that's the gold crest, it's the shortest. Where I am, got a stone wall opposite me with some hedges either side. And in one hedge, I've got one male wren who's built some nests and is singing. And further up, I've got another male wren. And the territories overlap on the wall in the middle. And occasionally one of them comes and sits on the wall and sings. And I've been having my coffee and sandwich and seeing it several times thinking, I've got to go and do it. Well, that's why I'm here, because it's one of my ambitions and I've got the time to do it now. So, you know, why not get on with it? Now, we need a few bits of basic kit to do it with. You need something to balance your lens on because you don't want to be, you know, standing there holding your lens the whole time because it's going to wave up and down and scare anything away. And, you know, if you've got a heavier lens than this, it's going to ache your arm. So I've got a bean bag here. Um, it's not my proper bean bag because I, I left that in India <laughs> where I'm meant to be right now instead of on lockdown. So it, it, it's a bag. It's got chickpeas in it. OK, but if you haven't got that, just get a pillow. Um, and lob some sand in it or anything or some mud anything that will just weigh your bag down on the window okay give it a good karate whack to put a hole in the middle take your lens bash it on the outside of the car which is part of it and put it there the horse over there by the way thinks it's the best thing ever watching this because it's seen me do 51,000 takes and get it wrong um, and that's it now some birds you have are going to be very 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 shy um, and scared of you so you can put you know one solution is to do that which is pretty ridiculous um, the best solution is to open your door to trap it in your door just a little bit hold your camera <laughs> Well, you do that and there you go. And you've got a pretty good net there um, that will stop anything getting scared of you. Now, of course, the wren here doesn't care about me at all because it's an urban wren and it sees coming and going all day long. And I've been sitting here for a few days and getting some amazing pictures of it. It's been great. Every time it sings, my heart jumps. It's just the most special thing to hear a wren singing. It's just truly, truly incredible. I just love it.
Now I've just walked up the track from the house you can see behind me and there is a nice barn that you can see. Uh, the barn is very interesting because inside are two little owls. We didn't know they were there. We were walking back up from the track from the house and one was sitting in the hole looking out. It was about a week ago. It's unbelievable. So we've been watching them through binoculars from a distance because we didn't want to disturb them. We wanted to work out where they came in and out so we could make a plan on how to photograph them. Um, they come out of the far end of the barn in the morning. It's where they're out the most. No other way um, of photographing them apart from putting a bag hide over me, which is a great big camouflage tent, <laughs> and stalking out into the middle of the field, sitting there and being still for sunrise and hoping for the best that they come out or they don't. Um, putting the, the, the cape over me uh, looks a bit ridiculous, I know, but it's, it's the key to it all because it masks my human shape. And I just look like an odd piece of something in the field, but not human. Of course, they're not relying on a sense of smell. They're relying on sight. So providing they don't see me and I keep quiet, um, then I can get some pictures. And boy, did I get some pictures. Two days out of three, nothing. Third day, oh my God, I got some of the best little old pictures I have ever taken purely because of the setting. Uh, it's incredible. And if you don't believe me, check out these pictures now and you've just got to love little owls. They need all the friends that they can get. All of our native species do right now. And I just absolutely adore them. And I hope you do too. Hi everybody and welcome to our little rewilding corner in our garden. We have lots of areas where we try to help nature and this right now is our favourite. These are our, and we consider them as our, they're part of the family, our red mason bees. Now we've got a special bee house for them and they're just amazing. They live all around us all of the time. They nest in these cardboard tubes that you see here. And you can see my hand going inside the hive. You think, what, are you mad? No, because they're effectively stingless. They're very, very docile. And they're just very cool characters to have around. We have them, you know, when we're sitting outside having picnics and stuff, they come and buzz all around us. You can see I'm not even flinching. I'm not scared about them at all. They're just absolutely amazing. They just want to go about their business. And I just want to share a little bit of their life with you over the next couple of minutes have a visitor now right there there's a female look at that with the pollen on her um, and she's going into the tube there and she'll push the pollen into the back um, um, and that will be food later on for the larvae okay so she's just left again to go and get some more um, they love to nest in these cavities that's where we first found them in our old house they were nesting in the cavities in the house and uh, uh, they were actually needed more cavities than we actually had so we bought them a special house we brought it down with us when we moved house and unfortunately it's destroyed this year but not before all of our mason bees and that's what it's like we consider them as ours all of the mason bees hatched we've now brought them this swanky new house from uk mason bees a great organization i hasten to say that's taught us everything we know and they're using it and it's really cool they come into these uh, cardboard tubes um, and they come in and they lay an egg obviously um, and then they bring in the pollen as food okay for the larva when it hatches and then they seal it all up as you can see here some of them are sealed up with mud and that's what they do it's just amazing to watch it I just love it one just went in there full of pollen it's just incredible now, right at the start of their life cycle gives me as a photographer an opportunity to get some really fantastic pictures, as you see here, because when they mate, it's a bit of a frenzy, a bit of a menage a trois. And I'm not going to say more. You're seeing the pictures here and you can see exactly what I mean. It's hilarious. It's really difficult to actually photograph them when you're laughing so much. But it was awesome to watch them mating right down here. Um, and then obviously they come in and they lay the eggs, uh, as I said, inside the tubes. Um, get the food, block them up, and that's it. They'll nest until about June, um, and then that's it until next year. So we will take the tubes out then, 
uh, UK Mason Bees gives you all the information on how to manage the cocoons and keep them safe until next year. And hopefully then, when we put the tubes back in next year, we'll get the same bees will come out and hatch. Obviously, we're not the same bees, the, the new bees will hatch. They'll use this and we'll have a bigger population. And we're helping the population of mason bees because mason bees are incredible pollinators. They are 200 times more effective than the honeybee at pollinating your garden. They're fantastic. Trust me, they're amazing. So have a look at UK mason bees and please help us rewild our mason bee population because they're just awesome. Now, for the past couple of months since I last spoke to you, I've been working very hard on the farm here, trying to get to grips of lots of the local species. And over the next four minutes, I wanna show you some of the really cool stuff I've been doing, because it's been absolutely epic. It's been brilliant for my mental health to just immerse myself in the wonderful wildlife that's here. And also the challenge of being a wildlife photographer and trying to outwit them enough to get pictures. So let's have a look at what I got, starting with flowers. Andy Rouse, flowers indeed. Now on the farm here, there are lots and lots of wildflowers in the meadows. And before they cut for silage, it was just absolutely incredible. One of the fields was covered in dandelions. You might not think that dandelions are beautiful, but I tell you what, against the setting sun, there are a few plants that are as magical as the dandelion. I like to call them geodesic shapes. It's not even a word that's in any dictionary, but I've invented it. So Wild Man Rouse has invented the word geodesic. Um, they're beautiful against the setting sun and I liked nothing more than getting down and dirty in the grass, getting them backlit, waiting for the sun to sink in the horizon and taking some magical shots. It was really, really awesome. And of course it helped me find lots and lots of insects. What do you mean, Andy Rouse photographing insects? You're a big animal photographer. Well, I do flowers now. I do dandelions. So why not insects? Andy Rouse and bugs? That's right, I love macro stuff now. I've taught myself macro over the past couple of months for having no skill or knowledge whatsoever. It was actually the mason bees that really got me into it. Well, since then I've been doing lots of backlit stuff of the bees in this very field where I'm sitting now. It's been really magical to do it. During the day I've been doing front lip pictures of the bees, getting down in the dirt, following them from uh, flower to flower and they were feeding on the buttercups. It was really, really magical. And when I did that, I began to find a whole new world. I began to find leaf beetles and weevils and stuff like that, things I'd never even photographed. Even the dung fly, I found some magical oh, colors in it. It was just incredible. But one morning on the river, it really changed my whole perception of what I was doing because I fell in love with the damozel, these amazing damselflies, electric blue, uh, you've seen them flying around. They're just incredible and I love them. Well, I set myself a challenge as I always do. You should always set yourself challenges of trying to get them in flight because they're really, really stunning in flight. And I got some absolutely amazing stuff. I couldn't believe it. Absolutely got, well, I didn't get loads. I got about four um, with a few days of trying. But that's the good thing about, you know, digital and using mirrorless. You can try, try, try. And if it's no good, well, you delete it all, you learn, and then you try again and again. And I managed to get some really cool stuff, but some really cool backlit stuff as well. So you gotta love your damselflies, and I certainly do. Now, about a month ago, I found a really good area on the farm here where lots of birds were coming down to bathe in the heat of the day. So I put a hide up there and I got some really lovely pictures of yellow wagtails that I've never, ever had any experience of before. I mean, they were amazing birds. The pides came down as well. They were much more enthusiastic bathers chucking um, water all over themselves. Well, here we are again on my local patch, and I'm really lucky here that on this patch, I have two of the most colorful birds that you could ever wish to see. One is the yellow wagtail, and the other one is the beautiful common kingfisher. Got to keep things simple when you do this, okay? So simple perch, simple setup, don't try to complicate it. Simple background, simple man, absolutely perfect. That's me in the hide, all set and ready to go. Very, very excited, you never get um, blase about seeing a kingfisher. You can, sorry, I'm going to keep looking all the time. Uh, you never get blase about seeing a kingfisher in front of you. Uh, I'm not going to miss the shot because I've got my remote control here attached to this. So this is for the action. The portraits, I don't want to rush portraits. You want to be sedate and slow and get it right. I get the composition right because portraits are all about 
composition. But for the action, I've just got one chance of getting it when it comes into land and then maybe one chance of it going off onto that perch there or diving or something. So it's quite frantic and you'll see maybe there'll be quite a little frantic action when it happens. Um, I only shoot in the last two hours of the light anyway. I'm not interested in shooting at any time before that. And really my main interest is the golden hour in the last hour. to be a punk rocker but mummy won't let me oh he's gone to the other perch you, you horrible thing <laughs> that's always the way he's gone to the other perch so if i turn this camera now gently there he is get the focus on him that's a lovely picture look at that wow that's a lovely portrait just going to make it slightly brighter there we go that's nice when they're looking at something like that so hide behavior, how do you behave inside the hide? Well, you behave very, very quietly. You keep still, you don't bash the sides, you can air guitar all you like, as long as you're not obvious, there's no silhouette going through where anything can see you. Um, you can do whatever you want, as long as you stay within these four walls and you don't stick anything outside. And I mean anything. And you, yes, I mean you. I've had fights on here where one of the others will come and try and knock this one off. It's got a lovely fast shot speed at 10 thousandths of a second at 4.5 and I've got to allow enough space around it for the fight to take place. Uh, that's about a lock there on the branch, so I'll leave that now. Okay, second kingfisher came in and you saw I hit the pro capture then. Now they've just both gone and I want to see if I got that pro capture sequence. Look, you can see they're both there, the ones behind. Oh, look at that with the wings up, look. Oh, look at that. You can't see either of the heads, but you've got both the wings. Oh, look at that. Oh my God, I've got it all in frame. Oh, look at that, it's brilliant. With the one behind, with fully with the wings out, this one behind with the blue stripe. Anything more after that? Hold on, let's have a look. Oh, there's another one. Are you out the frame? No, that's not, uh, no, he's in the frame. Oh, just fantastic. That makes everything worthwhile. You know, I always push the boundaries of what I do. And I think this has shown how much I push the boundary um, and get something incredible. I'm just such, I'm such a high. The best thing about being in the hide this time is that I brought my daughter, Sabrina, in last time. And to bring a five-year-old in to see a kingfisher is pretty special. She absolutely loves it. She goes, oh, it's so cute, daddy, it's so cute. I was like, shh, no, oh, it's so cute. I was like, oh, I want to touch it. It's like, no, no, no. But she absolutely loved it. She's majorly addicted to any bugs and stuff. And now kingfishers, it's great. I just um, got to keep her off the lions and tigers for a while. <laughs> but it shows that getting children involved in nature is a brilliant thing to do. It's a brilliant thing for nature. It's a brilliant thing for them. It's a brilliant thing for the world. And I would recommend it to anyone because it also makes you feel so, so good. Well, today's a very, very important day. We have some of our peacock butterflies about to be released. We've raised them from caterpillars in safety. And you can see Susie behind here is just holding one of the containers that we've got uh, five adults in over some flowers so they get the chance to feed and get the chance uh, to get an idea of what to do. Because as happens in the past, as soon as you lift the container off, they will flap off into the distance. It's an awesome feeling um, to raise them. Um, so let's come and have a close up look. Okay, so we've got three feeding now, which is good. So we're just gonna wait till they all get a feed before lifting the canopy off. Um, this is not for photography, okay? I'm not doing this for photography. If I can get some pictures of them, I will. We're doing this for rewilding because this is our garden and we take such pride and pleasure um, into putting butterflies and other stuff back into the wild. So uh, we've released a comma um, into this garden and we saw a comma yesterday, which we've never seen before, actually on this plant. So maybe it was ours. Um, I've got the peacocks here that we're gonna release and we've also got some small tortoise shell as well that are in the caterpillar stage uh, that are gonna come into the area as well. So we've got quite a lot of plants in the garden that are butterfly friendly and it just shows what you can do for local conservation. Forget the photography, okay? If the photography comes 
good as part of it and you get a few pictures, great. But this is not for that. This is for rewilding and doing something really positive for nature. And our five-year-old daughter absolutely loves all of this as well. So it's brilliant for kids to get them into nature as well. So have a go yourselves. And I probably better stop talking because they probably want to be released. Now, during lockdown, you have discovered an awful lot of things about me. Well, I've discovered an awful lot of things about myself. And I never thought that I would have ever photographed butterflies like this. I've never even looked at photographing butterflies. And when I've photographed them, I've been absolutely appalling at it. Now, I'm not Andy Rouse butterfly expert now, but what I have done, I have come on a long journey. And on that journey, I have learned what I'm good at and what I'm bad at. And I've learned how to get good butterfly images in my own style. And um, I think it's very important to do this. And I know a lot of you um, have been frustrated and not being able to get out during lockdown and you've really enjoyed your gardens. And I'm sorry that this is coming out in early September rather than in early June. Well, we weren't in this garden because our house was flooded in early June. So I've shot everything very, very late in this garden just to show you how amazing it is. And of course, you've got this on video for next year as well. But how amazing it is to get the butterflies on your own patch. Now, this garden here is fantastic. It's mature. And what I liked about it is that everything has come into flower at different times. OK, so we had the buddleia come on uh, in a couple of places for quite a long time. Um, other flowers dotted around the garden, which I haven't got a clue what they are. And now we've got the sedum here, which is unbelievable. It's completely in flower. Um, the, the, it's just covered in every species of bee that there is, um, but also it's a great attractor to butterflies. And it's been a wonderful experience to be in this garden photographing butterflies. So I hope that you enjoy it and I hope that you can really get something from it. And all I really want you to get from it is an appreciation of how amazing butterflies are and how fantastic it is in our gardens. You can attract butterflies to a window box. So if you live in a flat and all you've got is a window box, you can still attract butterflies if you put the right plants down. And I'm hoping that when you see this film, you'll be inspired to do exactly that because butterflies and bees and other insects need all of the help that they can get. Well, that brought back some amazing memories of doing those flying damozels and the singing wrens and even Rouse the plant and butterfly photographer. Who knew that I would do that? and so much love it. It's because it's local. It's because I had the chance to look, and like a lot of us have done, we've had the chance to see our local wildlife. You know, We've had nothing else to do. We've had the time to look, and that's great. And what I want none of you to do is to lose that focus, because local wildlife is awesome. It's awesome for our mental health. It keeps us really happy, really motivated, and walking towards that light that's at the end of the tunnel. And I know it all looks dark sometimes around us, but it's not. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, and we're all getting there, and we're all getting there fast. And I promise you, I'll be here with Wild Angle for the next few months to take you forward um, until we get back to the new normal, whatever that's going to be. So right now, I hope that you've enjoyed the highlight show, and I'll be back again very soon indeed. See you later. Well, that's the end of Wild Angle, and you can see some links on the screen here to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also to look at other Wild Angles in the playlist. Also think of joining the Wild Bunch Club and buying some premium content from wildbunch.andyrouse.co.uk. Thanks, as always, for watching, and apologies for the awful editing, which is all of my own work. All right, see you later. Bye now.